Hello, everyone. Thanks for joining our webinar, Engaging All Students for Success with Quizlet. Um, this session is perfect for teachers and school administrators who are new to the Quizlet platform and looking to learn more about what it has to offer them and their students. Um, it's 301, so we're going to go ahead and get started. Um, really quickly, um, let's introduce ourselves. My name is Amalia Nelson. Um, I work on a lot of initiatives to help support our teacher and student communities, um, including running our Teacher Ambassador Program. Um, also on this call is Laura, our Director of Marketing. Uh, she is going to help us with our Q&A session at the end of the webinar. So today, what we're going to cover um, is a few different things around getting started. Um, we'll be featuring a presentation by middle school history teacher Michael Sneed, who will tell us about his own experience using Quizlet with his students and the positive changes he's seen in their scores, scores and motivation. Um, then we'll quickly review how to get started, um, things like signing up, creating your first set, finding material in Quizlet, um, and then we'll finish with a round of questions and answers. Um, so as we're going through the presentation, make sure to enter your questions into the chat box. Um, we'll try to get through as many as we can during that session, and we'll make sure to follow up with you individually by email if we don't cover your question. Um, so quickly, some background on Quizlet, the company. Um, Quizlet was originally created by a student for students, and now it's used by students, teachers, lifelong learners for all different types of subjects. Um, it was founded in 2005 by Andrew Sutherland, who was a high school sophomore at the time. Uh, one night he was having a really hard time studying for a really ch challenging French test, so he ended up programming a really simple website to help him keep track of the vocab words he was learning um, in a way that was much more efficient and effective than paper flashcards. The next day he ended up acing the test, so he let his classmates use the tool and everyone actually started getting better grades. So since then he kept working on it, um, and then in 2007 he ended up launching Quizlet.com to the public for others to use. Um, and then in the years since, Quizlet has spread mostly word of mouth by students and teachers who have found it really helpful for them. So 10 years later, we're now a team of just under 50 people. We have a website, mobile apps, and over 150 million sets that have been created by our users. We now have seven different study modes, including an in-class game called Quizlet Live led by teachers and 20 million users from around the world who use Quizlet every month. Uh, we're extremely proud of the platform we've built so far and are super excited to keep adding powerful, engaging tools that can help students learn and teachers teach. So next up, um, I'm really excited to introduce our teacher presenter today, Michael Sneed. Um, like I mentioned, he's a history teacher um, at Barton Middle School in Texas who has been using our platform with his students for just over a year. We first met Michael when he applied to our Teacher Ambassador Program and told us about how Quizlet was having such a powerful and positive impact on the lives of his students. After hearing his story, we knew he'd be perfect for an event like this, so without further ado, I'll hand things over to him. Just give me a moment. All right. Hello? Michael, can you hear us? Are we ready? Um. So Quizlet has been a game changer for uh, me and the rest of the uh, teachers on my campus. Um, it really has made a huge impact um, in our department and we are extremely excited about uh, using Quizlet. The students are too and um, the students can't wait to start studying the next set. So a little bit about me. Um, I'm in my 11th year of teaching. I've taught just about everything. I've taught Spanish, math, science, social studies, regular, uh, pre-AP, and special ed. And currently I teach 6th uh, through 8th social studies and 6th grade math. Um, so how I discovered it. Um, last year my students, uh, special ed students as well as struggling students were really having a hard time uh, getting ready for tests. Uh, they didn't know what to study, how to study, and so I was just searching and searching. Every unit I would try a new method of reviewing or getting things to the students so they can start uh, studying. Uh, it took me about four units about uh, midway through the first semester and then I found Kahoot. And it worked well, but not great. Uh, then I stumbled upon uh, Quizlet and it completely changed everything. Um, I started making Quizlets when the unit first started and then 
you could give it to the students and they would start studying it and we saw a tremendous increase in our students performance. So of course how you start is you need a Quizlet account and it's really easy to do. Um, it took me about maybe two minutes to do. Uh, so once you're starting to make your first set, you can, um, like you heard Amalia said, there is plenty of sets out there already. And so you just go to the search button and you can start typing in what you're looking for and more than likely there's a Quizlet set already made and all you have to do is copy it and you can modify it yourself. Um, you can add pictures and definitions, phrases, quotes. Um, I've used this for math, science, social studies and you can pretty much do anything with this program. Uh, one way to have your class find you is by using uh, your username. If they can't, uh, um, if you don't have a link or something to give to the students, they can just go online and find your username and all of your uh, information is there, all the Quizlet sets. Um, and another thing I like to do is I like to make a QR code and it, it links it directly to the study set. So I have that up in my room and when students are done with their work early, I tell them to get a device and go scan it and they just start studying. So why do we care? Um, when students are given the access to the material at the beginning of the unit, it really does give them time to practice it, to repeat the information enough to where they're starting to learn it. When it's at the beginning, it allows them to also participate in discussions in the classroom and it just leads into further discussions. Maybe they have a question about something that's on the Quizlet and they'll go and actually research it or they'll bring up their question in class and so it does lead to deeper conversations in the classroom. Um, students that have a reading disability um, can actually have the terms and the definitions read to them and so they don't have to rely on their own reading skills. This way if they're in the, on the bus, if they're at home at night, they can actually push play on the, the slide and have it read it to them. And so this really has made our job easier. So how are we using it at school? Um, so I do a backwards planning, which most teachers do, and I take a look at the test and I find out the most important things. So once I plan that way, um, I take the main information and put that on the Quizlet set. And I do a lot of questions and answers, not necessarily a term and definition. Um, maybe they're test-like questions, meaning that um, they're very similar to the test question or at least covers the same content. And that way they can see it and start knowing it, especially if it's written in a really um, hard way for them to understand. Uh, like I said earlier, I have a QR code um, in the room and it really has cut down on the downtime. The student's done, they just go scan it. Um, and this is where I have it on my website. Um, I have it up here in the, the corner. I have it separated by classes. I have uh, four different accounts, which uh, it made it easier for me at the time, but I do know you can set up classes. But since this is for my entire school, I thought I'd do it this way. Um, all of them right here that I've made and so I made a lot of these last year and so now my entire year is done and so when students are done with one test uh, or one part of the work they can go into the next and uh, students have um, started studying two or three units ahead of time and getting that proficient um, and it really has made a huge impact. Now we've also started using the Quizlet um, for a retest. So once you are on the study set, you can make a test and we had the students do this in class before test um, for to see how well they know it, then we review, but if they happen to fail the test, um, we reteach it, but then we have them re do a retest on the Quizlet. The best part about this, it's similar questions to what's on the actual test, but it grades it for us right then and there. They just show us the grade that's on their screen and we can write that down. So it has cut down on, on time there as well. So this is what I have on the board. Um, I usually have the test posted um, pretty much the day after the current tests are taking. I mark down when the next test is going to be. I make a QR code and I'll show you that later on how to make it. 
And so, like I said, anytime that students are wondering when the next test is or what they need to study, it's already ready. And that way, they are able to have no downtime, go straight over there and start studying it. So how students use it. Uh, students can create an account um, on Quizlet, or they can just go to my website or your website, and they can click on um, the study set and start studying. If they have their own um, account, they can download it to their account, and so they don't need the internet to, um, to study. They can study this at home on their, like I said, on their own device. Um, there's a matching game on there, and the students in my class have been uh, competing to try to get the fastest time and there's a big competition between a bunch of the boys which is really nice because then a lot of times boys aren't really engaged like this and with this competition it has really made them um, compete as well as know the material um, really well and try to get better than everybody else and the students that do this daily or a couple times a week they do score uh, an A, usually it's a high A, um, but those that are uh, poor test takers, um, they make usually Bs, uh, but most of the students do make As once they really get the material down. The end goal, however, though, would be to have the students create their own Quizlet. Um, this way, when they're writing the questions and answers, they'll just know it just a little bit better. But for right now, especially in my situation with middle schoolers, um, I'd like to make it for them so they know kind of how to study what they're looking for and then maybe as they get on to 8th and ninth grade then they will start to um, maybe make their own. So here's a little introduction to uh, Quizlet Live and this is just from a um, uh, this is actually from a science class. And the current class you're watching is a inclusion setting to where there's all different types of uh, student uh, ability levels. So Quizlet Live, um, it is students working together and they have to talk through the questions to solve the answers. Um, each team, it's usually about three or four students, um, are divided evenly and the answers that they're given, um, there's three or four on each screen and it's only on their screen. The question's the same but each screen has a different answer choices. So you have to talk to each other and really try to figure out which is the best answer um, from their list of uh, answer choices they have. Um, the conversation goes up, the academic vocabulary goes up, um, but there are some ways that students try to get around it by having them, you know, their friends push the button for them on the screen. So if you set up some expectations, uh, then the students are engaged and they're forced to talk uh, through each question. Now the students need to realize the answer might not be on their screen and so they just can't pick one. Uh, the goal of the game is to get 12 questions in a row correctly. Um, so if you get one wrong, if you're on question 9 and you get it wrong, you start all the way back at zero and it is the same 12 questions um, until that round is over. Um, this really does keep the students accountable to their team. If there's a student that is not wanting to participate, uh, most of the time I see students really trying to get that student engaged and it's, uh, it's really nice to see students talking on, with academic vocabulary and working through the problems themselves. The other ways we can use it is after going through it a few times, the students are really starting to get the, the questions, they know the answers, and so they're still working together but they're um, not talking through the questions as much. So by this time we have the students do a silent round and so they they go back to their assigned seat and they cannot talk. Their team is spread out around the room and 
they are forced to recall their, on their own memory on what the answer is. Um, a lot of times the games go a little bit slower, um, but it's really nice to see the students um, forcing, it forces the students to be accountable and pay attention and really try to get the right answer. Um, what I normally do as well is I have uh, games for like best two out of three and if their team wins, uh, we give them a, a, a reward. Um, and something we like to do is we give them a little pause right here, and they write their name on it, and they put it on the wall, and it's kind of like the stickers on a helmet. The students really like to see how many names they get on the wall. Um, we give them an option between this and another reward, and the students always pick this. And this is from the start of the year, and I'm hoping that it will go around the room, at least across one full wall for us. Um, here is a Quizlet Live in action. And as you can see on the screen, um, all it is is a, a bar graph, and it keeps track of who's in the lead, um, how many questions they got correct so far, and how close you are to the 12 in a row. If you get one wrong, it does send you back to zero and you see the, the bar graph to go all the way back down. And as you can tell, the, it really doesn't take long once the students really start um, reviewing the material, some rounds are 30 seconds long, sometimes they take a little bit longer. I just wanted to, to wait to the end because you can see, you'll be able to see the, the students really, really getting excited when uh, one team wins. And I'm just going to show you a few minutes of this. This is how we do the silent round. Everybody's at their seat. And there is no talking. Um, this, this round does go longer because they have to rely on themselves. Um, so we did do this after school. Um, the, some of these kids are, this was mandatory tutoring, but a good portion of them came because they wanted to learn. Uh, we did, uh, we gave them a little bit of food or snack and water after school, and uh, this was to get ready for our state test. And these students are eighth graders. They're trying to get ready, and like I said, they're coming here on their own mainly because of this game. They're all talking together, they're helping each other out, and the competition really does pick up. Um, they really want to be the best in the room the, and the best in the grade level as well. All right, so some student success we've had uh, over the past year and a half. Um, I had students last year that started making 20s and 30s on their first test. Um, once I found Quizlet, we gave it to them ahead of time, and their score started to increase steadily. They went from 30s to 50s. Um, by the end of the year, uh, they were making 80 range. Now, both these students are nonverbal, and they are in a resource setting, um, or should be in a resource setting, but we are using this in a regular class and they're taking the regular test with everybody else and they're making um, in the 80s and 90s this year on our test for seventh grade. Um, another student uh, was in a resource class and now is in an inclusion setting and he's making 85s and 90s on test um, and he's in the upper half of the class average with that. Um, also have another student that has made her first um, hundred ever um, after taking the using the Quizlet and then taking the test. Uh, so last year we did start um, reviewing in March for the state test, 
and we had two classroom settings. You saw one of them was the after school, and we had about 50 students um, on a daily average uh, that were wanting to come um, either by their choosing to or mandatory, but they're still all wanting to be there. And last year our school had the largest, uh, the largest population and had the most diverse population as well, and we ended up having the highest scores in the district. We do have great teachers, but everybody said that this wouldn't have been as good unless we had Quizlet. So here's some data that I found uh, from this uh, benchmark, or, uh, excuse me, our fall final. Uh, the district scored in sixth grade, as you can see, a 73% um, passing, and we had an 80% in sixth grade. In seventh grade, it was almost 60, and we were close to 80 for seventh grade. Eighth grade was huge when it comes to the passing our state test. Um, we had about a 30% increase of students that would have passed the STAR test. And this is our uh, my website data that shows that people are going to my website to go to Quizlet. And so we only have about 600 students in our school. And this was only in a, about a week uh, to two week time frame and we had over 400 um, unique logins so that means that there's 400 students that are going to our, the website to go to the Quizlet and studying. It made a huge impact as you can see on our, our scores and this is just one example of those uh, scores. This is happening in all areas all the time. There's just huge increases. So uh, I have some teachers on campus. This is a, a math teacher that's been using it uh, she's not very tech savvy, but she loves it. Um, she likes to see the students engaged, um, easy to shuffle teams, uh, and it really has helped her class as well. Uh, I have a parent that said that this was the most beneficial um, thing that we give in her kids. Uh, this is the parent that has the two students that struggled with 30s and now are making uh, Bs and sometimes A's on tests, and without this, it wouldn't, they wouldn't have been as successful as they are right now. Uh, my principal uh, loves it to see the class being mixed up, seeing them working with different students. It has enhanced the way that a uh, student has been learning in the class, and just have to communicate and talk to each other. Uh, and she was also likes to use it as a reteach and retesting um, when she was in the classroom last year. So to go over, to kind of review, we're going to, uh, to go through, you can make study cards real easily and the students can take them anywhere. It can use for any subject and more than likely there's a study set already made that's similar to what you need. And if a student practices this two to three times a week, they really should be passing the assessment um, at least with a B if they're truly trying to learn it. And Quizlet Live is one of the best games out there for reviewing before a test. Um, we just did it today, and it's just excitement in the room. The students love it, uh, and everybody's participating. And if the students do use this, it does make um, your life easier as a teacher. So I wanted to, to go and kind of show you how I make some things. So this is our, um, it's called a unit organizer. It's a, part of a, a SIM device, it's a strategic instruction model, and this is how we set up each unit. And it, we break it apart, and these are the four main categories that we have. And so these are the, the facts that the students really need to know uh, before taking uh, the test. And so from here, I just take these, and I either copy and paste it in, um, I might take out a, a word so it's a fill in the blank, I might just change it into a question or I might make it a true false statement. And so I do this for sixth grade and uh, seventh and eighth grade. I kind of make it based off the test, um, reword the questions, uh, make the content the same, but uh, not exactly the word for word from the test. And this has made, like I said, you've seen just big improvements. Um, so some things you would like to do, you can go to the search bar if there's uh, something that you're wanting to find. Um, 
like president and it's very easy to find and other people that have made sets already uh, I've done this before to where I've borrowed other people's information and modified it to be, uh, meet my needs uh, pictures are also great to use as you can see from these um, few study sets the other way the other thing I like doing is making the QR code so what I do is there's actually a way that you can share the information you can copy this link you can share it on Google Classroom Facebook Twitter um, you can copy it and paste it in the email and it goes straight to this link um, the other way that I like doing it is I copy it and I put in QR code generator I use the very first one and I, I copy and paste it in create a QR code and now this is going straight to my study set and so I just take this I label it with a unit I print it out and this is what goes on my wall and so like I said no downtime in class um, if you have a few students done early then they just go get a device scan it um, and start studying so I believe that's about it on my side of things thank you so much Michael that was great um, really really helpful and informative um, so to start to wrap up, we will just go over a quick summary of how to get started in a few easy steps. Um, mostly already covered by Michael, but uh, you need to sign up for a free account, um, and you can search for content created by others or create your own sets. Um, it's easy to share contents, content with your students um, in several different ways. Uh, and then there's several different study modes and uh, really interactive games that can be used in and out of the classroom by your students. And finally, Quizlet has free mobile apps for iOS and Android um, that are free to download and allow students to study anywhere. So to sign up, just go to the Quizlet homepage. Um, you have the option to sign up with Google, Facebook, or your email address. We often recommend Google, um, as it's so easy to just link your account to your Google account and then not have to create a separate password for Quizlet. Searching for content, um, this saves you a ton of time, like Michael said. There's over 150 million sets already created on thousands of topics, um, so it's easy to search. Um, and we often recommend using very specific search terms to get the best results. Um, but you can easily preview a set, click into it, and then if you want to actually customize it, it's easy to make a copy of it that you can then edit and save as your own. Um, and if you already have word lists or you just prefer to create your content from scratch, that's also super easy to do. Just in our um, header, there's always an option you'll see to create content. You click on that button, and you can either add terms and definitions, or you can import your existing material, which again saves you a ton of time. We also have a feature called Auto Define, which gives you, um, which is basically a database of user-contributed definitions that have already be, been used in popular sets. So that's another great way to save time. Um, and also on the Create Set page, you have the option to add images. We have a free gallery with thousands of free images, um, and as well as you know an upgraded option to upload your own images and record your own audio. So like Michael mentioned, sharing content with your students is easy, and you can do it in several different ways, whatever works for you, via link, email, Twitter, Facebook, or Google Classroom. You can also create a Quizlet class on Quizlet and actually add your sets to it and invite your students so that students have an easy way to always access all of your content. Um, you can also embed your study sets on other LMSs. Um, that's an option in the toolbar, which you'll see in this visual, right under the dot, 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 more icon. Um, and you just copy and paste your code into your own website. So that's a great way to have students just go straight to your website and study from that page. And then what do your students do with Quizlet? They use all of our interactive study activities and games, including flashcards, learn, test, match, and Quizlet Live, which is actually our first um, game built with the intention of being teacher-led and used in class. Um, so all of these are super fun and can be used individually or collaboratively in or out of the classroom. And then finally, make sure that you and your students download the app. Um, as I mentioned, they're free to download. They work offline, actually, in sync with the websites. 
um, website so students can really just study anywhere on their commute, in the hallways, whatever they need to do. So with that, uh, let's go straight into Q&A. And I see that there is a lot of great questions already in the box. Um, if you have questions, go ahead and enter them into the question section of your webinar tool. And we'll go ahead and just go down the list and answer as many as we can. All right, this is Laura. So I see a question from Lisa. She says, if my students do not have an account, they just use the QR code to get in. So one of the great things about Quizlet is um, you can use Quizlet without an account. Um, and so if you have students uh, that don't have accounts or aren't able to create accounts, um, they can certainly play Quizlet <coughs> Live or use any of the learning activities. Um, the, the drawback to that is that it's difficult for them to save their progress or create their own study materials, but they can certainly study and use, uh, use the ones you create, which is a great option. Um, in terms of the QR code, that would be something, we don't offer that on our site right now. We offer ways to share a Quizlet set with your class via a link or Facebook, Twitter, Google Classroom, um, but they can use the QR code to get in without an account. Um, but the, the benefits to creating accounts for your students are that um, they can see their track their own progress, see what terms are getting right, see what terms are getting wrong um, over time a little bit more, and then create their own content to study as well. So that's a great question from Lisa. Um, Pat, oh, sorry. Oh, no, that's okay. okay. Pat asks, can teachers see which students go online and study? If so, can teachers see if students actually studied or just signed in? I'm trying to determine if I can assign it as homework to study daily for 10 minutes. So that's a great question, and why don't I actually um, do a quick demo of something like that. Um, so we have a feature called Class Progress, which is an upgraded feature of the Quizlet Teacher Upgrade. Um, and that allows you to see a bit more analytics and data around your student study activity and um, their study data. So as an example, let me just bring up um, a set. And as you can see, this is my, this is my logged in home screen, my latest activity feed. And here is uh, where all the sets that I've recently created or studied um, are added to a class live. Um, so I can easily get to my class progress screen from this. Um, and again, this dashboard gives upgraded teachers a little bit more visibility into their students' activity. So you know, we haven't studied this, this set a ton, but as you can see, there's all these different modes and individual students who are members of your class and you can actually see whether or not they have used these modes. So for example, this user finished test, and I can actually see um, that was two days ago, and their best try was 80%. This user finished learn 52 minutes ago. So, and if I uh, filter on all these different dates, I can filter by past day, past week, past two weeks, a month, and a year, um, I can see more data for that. Um, so again, this shows you your student's activity, um, which modes they have started and completed on an individual set, as well as their latest high scores for test, match, and gravity. What this doesn't show is exactly how long they've been studying or how many sessions um, they've, they've completed or attempted at overall. Um, another cool thing about class progress is actually this other view. So if I go back to the set, I can see group study data. So here I can see words that are um, most missed to never missed, um, which gives me a sense of what potentially I should focus on during my in-class time. So if I assign my students to study this set um, tonight, and then tomorrow they come in, and I can see that students are always getting certain terms wrong, we can probably discuss them in class and um, study them together and try to really hone in on those, those terms that need work. Yeah, I would say though, to, just to end that question, like, could you use this to assign homework at, at night and see you certainly could. The one thing we tend to caveat is that Quizlet has, like we mentioned, 150 million study sets, it's the internet, so there's no way of sort of protecting, like, if you wanted your students to um, complete a Quizlet study activity on their own, there's no way to see, for example, if they didn't work with another student or any of those kind of safeguards, so I think we tend to recommend it's better for sort of learning activities than for formal or graded assessments because there just isn't really a great way to 100% guarantee that uh, that there there would be I would say in line with the academic integrity that you might want. Um, yep. And that's up to you, obviously. So you know your students best, 
but that's just one thing to keep in mind. Um, yeah, great note. Um, a great actually follow up question since we're looking at class progress right now. What is the difference between free account and the upgraded $35 a year quiz a teacher account? That is a great question. So um, let me just navigate to a new page for a second. Um, so what we can see here are all of the cool features that you get with a Quizlet teacher upgrade. Um, but let's start by saying what you get with a free upgrade, or with a free account. Um, so essentially with a free account you can create unlimited study sets. You can create up to eight classes. Um, you have access to our free image gallery. Um, and you get to use our text-to-speech audio, which is essentially when you assign a language to a set um, and then type those words in. When your students study that set and click on that text, they'll be able to hear that audio. Um, so, for example, if you have a set that is in Spanish and English, you would tag one side as Spanish, one side as English, and when your students study that, they would hear the Spanish pronunciation and then also the English pronunciation. Um, that being said, we don't have every language covered with text-to-speech audio. We just have 18. So um, another great feature of Quizlet Teacher is actually voice recording, um, where you can record your own audio. And we've seen teachers use that um, to, to supplement the uh, languages that we don't have, as well as you know provide study hints or example sentences. There's a lot of creative ways to use that. Um, so other features that come with the Quizlet Teacher upgrade class progress, as we've mentioned, um, ad-free studying. This means as you're logged into your account, you won't see ads, but also every set that you create will not have ads on it. So if your students are studying your content, they will not see ads either. Um, like I mentioned earlier, image uploading. So again, as a free user, you have an access to our, our free image gallery. But here, if you have specific images that you'd like to use, you can upload them with this upgrade. Um, Quizlet Live, again, is a free feature, but these are some special add-ons that customize the game even further. Um, and then additional features like uh, priority support from our Quizlet um, support team, as well as access to new features. You can search. Um, there's actually a filter on search for teacher-created content only. Um, so special things like that are all things that are incorporated in the Quizlet teacher upgrade. Um, a lot of our users use the free account, and that's totally all they need. It's all of the core um, uh, capabilities are in the free account, but Quizlet Teacher is just a great way to get more engaged, see some analytics, and have access to more kind of um, cool content creation features. All right, I see a question from Martin. Martin says, in order for Quizlet Live to work, it seems you need <laughs> mobile devices, since students have to move around to form their team, correct? I have a computer lab with desktop computers. Is there a way to implement Quizlet Live in that environment? Uh, and the answer to that is, I think you can play Quizlet Live in that environment. How I've seen it work when I visited schools that have a computer lab with desktop computers is they actually just have the like, students move around um, as the teams get generated. And it takes a little bit to shuffle around because students have to get up and leave their computer and go form their new teams as they get generated. Um, but then if you have three computers that are close to each other enough that students can talk, uh, you can definitely play Quizlet Live that way. So it's not quite as, as I would say, elegant as a bunch of students picking up Chromebooks and, and turning around and forming their teams. But you can definitely play as long as your student, you and your students feel comfortable um, sort of leaving a desktop computer behind and rotating around. I think the other thing to keep in mind is, you know, if students have to sign into a desktop computer and there's anxiety or concern about students signing in and other students using their computers, that might be something to, to consider, but otherwise, I don't see any reason why uh, you couldn't do it that way. And that's how I've seen it done um, at schools that have uh, a sort of a more traditional computer lab environment. Okay, one, one last thing I wanted to note there also is that um, uh, one of the features of the Quizlet teacher upgrade that we were just talking about, um, part of the Quizlet Live customizations is actually being able to choose the groups that students are in. So in the normal free game, um, we randomize that. But in the upgraded version, teachers actually have um, the, the ability to organize those groups themselves. So in that case, in a um, computer lab environment, it's totally fine. You have control over who sits next to each other and who you put in groups. All right, I see a question that says, is there a way to modify a test for students? For example, I modify my spelling list for a few students who would have 10 of the 15 words. And the way that I would suggest doing that is if you have a group of students that need um, a smaller portion of the study set to, 
to study is to actually create a second <laughs> study set. So you yeah. might have your original one that has 15 words, and then you can actually copy a set um, and just delete the terms that you, that second group of student might, students might not need to study. But there isn't a way to specify um, which terms get generated into a test. You can specify the number of questions you use in test mode, um, but there isn't a way to say uh, only show these, these 10 words to these students and then only show these 10 terms to these other students. Um, all right, we see a question that says, is it possible to use the Quizlet Live for less than six students for those with small homeschool classes? So Quizlet Live requires at least six students to, I should say this, at least six players to play uh, the activities, to use the game. What we have seen is if you have more than six devices, you can actually create uh, a round with fewer than six students. It just means that one student might be playing on both a tablet and a Chromebook or uh, a computer and a phone. Um, so it's a workaround, but if you want to play with a group of four students, for example, and you have two students that are really savvy, um, you could give, have them use two devices at once, and they would just have um, six sort of terms in front of them instead of three terms in front of them as the game progresses. Okay. And actually, I would also add, and, and one way we've seen this actually play that's kind of a fun, a fun little twist is oftentimes teachers will... Um, create a championship round uh, for Quizlet Live when they have um, a class, and maybe they'll have a team win win the first round of Quizlet Live. They'll then have the winning team um, break into their own their own. Um, each each student on the winning team will then get three devices in front of them uh, and play a championship round. And so that's a way that we've seen teachers sort of use that workaround as a fun way to keep the competition going. Um, so another question um, from Kyla. Some of my students earned badges today, but it asks for their birthday. I'm hesitant to have them fill that out. Should I be, um, or is the stage to do so? So this is a great question. Um, one of the requirements to sign up for a free Quizlet account is to enter your birth date. And the reason that we do this is because um, we comply with um, children's online privacy and protection laws. Um, this, the, the U.S. law that we comply with is actually called COPPA, um, and it requires that online, um, you know, providers like us actually make sure that the, the experience for students who are under the age of 13 is more protected. So in order to do that well, we actually need to ask for um, a valid birth date for every user who signs up for Quizlet so we can make sure to put them into the right experience. So, for example, if you have a younger student um, who signs up for Quizlet, um, and enters a birth date that is under the age of 13. Um, we remove all social kind of social media features. Um, we remove their ability to um, create content and make it public before their account is confirmed by a parent. Um, we um, allow them to join classes, but not to create their own classes. Um, we also make sure that they do not see ads anywhere on the site. Um, so again, we, we do this in order to make their experience um, you know, safe and private and comply with this law. So yeah, it's very important to enter their birth date. Um, and if you have any further questions about that, um, you can definitely fe feel free to reach out to us and we can explain that more. Okay, so it looks like we're running out of time um, and I think that we have um, answered a lot of questions um, and if we haven't answered your question we'll go ahead and like I said reach out to you individually over email um, and make sure to follow up. Um, the last thing that I do want to say is that uh, we do have a really great support center and if you can see on my screen I'm actually going to my username and going to the drop down and here I can see the help center so if I tap into the help center it brings me here and there's a ton of FAQs and Help Center articles that will answer almost any question. For example, if I'm interested in learning more about embedding my content, um, I can go straight to that FAQ, um, and that's really helpful. There's also a section for teachers here, which um, covers a lot of more guides around getting started, as including teacher resources, professional development, um, creating classes, um, more information about class progress, that sort of thing. So make sure to check out our Help Center 
Um, and yeah, we also have a blog that updates you with um, you know new webinars that we're coming out with, any kind of new resources we add to Quizlet. Um, so this is a really helpful um, uh, kind of sub navigation that you can get to from this drop down under your username. And I think that's it. So thanks so much for joining us today. Um, we really appreciate you um, taking the time to listen to our webinar, uh, learn from Michael, and uh, make sure to fill out that survey at the end. Thanks so much, guys. Bye.